Hi, I'm Krista Duke, and I'm the Youth Director at Chapel Hill United Methodist Church, and I'm here to bring you a small devotional today. This is something that's been really laying on my heart this entire time that we've all been in quarantine during this time, and it's something that we're all really navigating, especially for my students, and I just really want to be straight with you guys. Can I can I be straight for you, with you just for a moment here? Like, the start of 2020 right now, it really is just awful. It really just straight stinks. And for many of my students, especially uh, the seniors, this is a serious time of mourning. Um, they're living in a time that's unprecedented. No one has gone through this sort of thing to even help them navigate this stuff. And for years, they've worked for these moments, these huge milestones called graduation, and it's been stripped away from them in an instant. And for all of my students, they didn't get a chance to say goodbye to uh, friends and teachers. Numbers weren't exchanged. Yearbooks weren't signed. Um, no one's probably going to be able to wear a cap and gown and walk across the stage to get a diploma. Family and friends aren't going to get together to take those embarrassing pictures to lord over your head for the rest of your life. I mean, end of school year trips, even from um, my oldest, my eighth grader, she's not even going to have that end of school year trip now. A lot of students aren't going to have that senior prank day. It's not even going to probably be attempted. And that's a shame. It's just gone. And our students and maybe even you are mourning an end to some of the greatest milestones that could have happened in your life. These were supposed to be what many of us tell them is the greatest moments and times of their life. And this is one of those moments when you just don't want a well-intentioned individual to come up and quote Philippians 4.13 to you. Like, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Yeah, we know that overachieving Becky, but at that moment, you're kind of, you're just needing that space to process it. And sometimes you don't want someone to just give you a one-size-fits-all solution band-aid. So how do we process this? How, how do we navigate this? So I'm calling this small devotional, What Do I Do With My Emotions? Because these emotions... In this case, specifically grief doesn't have a shape. Grief just kind of comes out of nowhere and it's beyond our control. Grief hits all ages, nationalities, genders. It just knows no bounds. Kind of like Hurricane Michael back in 2018. It just comes out of nowhere, takes everything down, and leaves devastation behind it. Leaves us to just try to pick up the pieces, you know? One of the... <laughs> One of the things that annoys my husband is the fact of my lack of communication about my car over the many years that we've been together, married, dating, whatever, um, just the entire time we've known each other. My lack of communication about my car is just really abysmal. Um, and sometimes like my oil light will come on and I'll uh, try to bring it into conversation like, hey, my oil light came on maybe a few months ago. <clears throat> but the problem with that, even though I'm not so bad about it now, the problem with that is because of my inability to deal with the problem, to deal with just getting my oil changed, to tell my husband in the first place, things got worse with my car. And when we ignore problems, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger over time until we finally just deal with them until we process our grief or our feelings. It's just not going to go away. We're just going to carry it around like a chip on our shoulder for the rest of our life. So how do we process it? How do we work through this emotion with God? Sometimes literally, I, mean, I know this sounds cheesy, but sometimes it really, really means just journaling. I know it sounds super nerdy, but there's something about writing in a prayer journal that I've learned now from finally doing it years later that really kind of opens up um, your communication with God and just really straight telling him what's going on your, with your life that you don't necessarily say aloud sometimes. Sometimes it means literally going for a walk outside with AirPods, with your music on, and just listening to your favorite music, maybe your favorite praise song. And walking in general is really good for you. I mean, 
ask Jesus. It's said that he actually walked an estimated 21,525 miles over his entire life. And that's basically almost walking uh, around the entire world. So it's a pretty good thing if Jesus did it. So maybe it's even just allowing yourself to get a good cry out and just literally let it out. And let me just say that it's okay to cry and show emotions. We need to grieve in order to process our feelings. And God is our safe space to bring our baggage to. He's our safe space to bring our baggage to. But here's where we have to be careful. Because the world has a lot of answers to us as to what's going to make our problems, my problems, go away. To make things better, to make things numb. And maybe that would be to binge eat on my sofa, even when I'm not even hungry, and just binge watch Grey's Anatomy while I'm at it. Or maybe when no one's watching, I'm going to numb myself by cutting. Or... Uh, while no one's watching, I'm going to take another glass of alcohol or something. But true peace, it's where Jesus is found. Colossians 3.15 from the NIV says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. When we let something rule in our lives, whether it's our teachers, our bosses, our parents, or even the world, they are giving us a set of guidelines we are to follow in order to get through the game. And in this case, it's the game of life. And Christ is our umpire or our referee in our hearts and basically our feelings or emotions. But we get in conflict all the time with how we feel and what God says, right? we get those things twisted all the time. How we feel, what God says. We're twisting those things together all the time. But Paul here is saying, the Apostle Paul is saying, man, you gotta use peace as your center. You gotta use peace as your center. And who is the Prince of Peace? Christ, absolutely. And I know you guys know that. The peace of Christ is to rule our hearts. And I'm not saying you're going to magically just get better, but I am saying that Christ can handle your emotions, whether it's big or small. He can handle your baggage and he can help you navigate through this. Like Jesus, we have to process our emotions just like Jesus. You know, he didn't run from his emotions. He didn't run from his agony in the garden when he knew what was going to happen to him. He didn't die from embarrassment when he flipped over the tables in the tabernacle. Jesus didn't hide in frustration when his disciples just didn't seem to get it. You know, he didn't hide in the bathroom when he cried over his best dead friend, Lazarus. He processed his emotions in a healthy way. And it's never wrong. It's never wrong to tell Jesus our true feelings because you can't. You can tell Jesus your true feelings. You can bring him anything. He wants that relationship with you. And you can trust him to help you navigate these feelings. So today, my big question for you to think about, my big question for you to think about is, what do you need Jesus to help with today? What do you need Jesus' help with today? Dear Heavenly Father, I just really am prayerful that whatever emotions or feelings that the individuals are feeling, that they're not processing, Lord, that they are able to take it to you finally and to just lay that to you and to speak it out, Lord. Because sometimes when we just don't bring it to you, God, when we don't bring it to the Prince of Peace who can lay that upon our hearts, we just carry it around like baggage, God. But we know that the peace of Christ, the peace of you will rule in our hearts if we tell you how we're feeling, Lord, and if we process these emotions. We look to you as to how we process these emotions so we can gain that peace that you have and be thankful. In your holy name we pray. Amen.